to say thank y'all for coming out. Uh, this is our part two of our panel stuff. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for well, <laughs> well, I was scared. I really was. I felt like it was too late in the game for us to change quarterbacks. Yep, so I just got a few more questions. And one of them, like I was saying, from CNN to MSNBC and other news networks, the, the polling is showing, they break down the demographics of who's voting for who and, and by age group and everything. And one thing that has grown since 2020 when Biden ran against Trump is Trump's supposedly growth in voters amongst uh, black men. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, just an honest opinion, what are your thoughts on that? And before you piggy on and give me your thoughts, let me just share this. Uh, former Congressman Nina Turner in Ohio, I went on to uh, a breakfast club. That's a famous a radio outlet in yeah. New York that a lot of people go on to talk. And right. one thing that she's mentioned within the Democratic Party is sometimes they may emasculate black men, and that's why black men are moving away from the Democratic Party. That's, that's so um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's true? And then also, what are your thoughts on from these leads that's showing that some black men are converting over it, voting for Trump? Well, I guess if as far as African American men, now Kamala had a, a problem to work back in the day when she was the uh, prosecutor in California, mm -hmm. and she was sentencing guys that, based on what I've researched, these were repeated offenders. Okay. And I, to me, if you don't stole two cars or ten cars. You need a what woman. Yeah. So I'm not against her doing the hard penalty against repeated offenders. She was one of the most forgiving type prosecutors if it was your first offense. As a matter of fact, you threw out a lot of those though at times. So I don't know if that's the kind of feedback we're getting because she was a, a tough you know, prosecutor. You can't demonize her for doing her job. I agree. You right. can't. And that's the right. thing. And then right. there was a lot of misinformation. True. Not Absolutely. even misinformation, just lies. Just flat right. out lies. Yeah. yeah. And then we didn't do the research. We have yeah. to start doing the research. Yeah. Right. Getting the correct information. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. no please. Please. We all need to Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think to me, if you doing that, that's just like you said, misrepresentation and being misled. To me, I'm not totally against Republicans. I play golf, I have some this friends and everything. Donald Trump is not the right fit. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Right, I, I agree. But I think the point that you've raised is I think it's very important. Misogyny. Mm -hmm. Men have a problem of sometimes, I'm not gonna say submitting to the authority of a woman, but just seeing a woman in that position of authority and power, I think some men, are uncomfortable with that. Yeah, could be. So as a result, that there's going to be some pushback. Some men will take it to the extreme. I'm not going to vote for her because she's a woman. Exactly. Even Both though, right. So it's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is a binary choice in this election. We all know that. So, I mean, I can't understand why a man would consider Trump a Republican. If it was another Republican, he might want to consider that. But the position that this man has taken is just a man. I'm not quite clear why certain men would gravitate toward that type of selection. Like I said, I think it's just a binary choice this time around. Either Trump or Kamala. Yeah. Well, why Kamala, would you have a man trouble? or this woman. So I, I choose this woman. <laughs> My take on that. I mean, I just think sometimes men just <clears throat> have a position. Have the, well, uh, let me say this before I go into the men part. There are a lot of women that don't want to see oh, another one. The, uh, the White House. So, uh, I, you know, when the when the choice was made or when the decision was made to put uh, Harris as the nominee, okay, there was that initial excitement, okay, but then the concern came in because, you know, I would have gave you all the money I had when I went to bed on election night when Hillary was running, mm -hmm. Hillary was going to win. Right, yeah. right. Okay. So my immediate thing turned to concern of like, have we checked all the boxes? Is everybody on board? And then right. you started to see these these uh KPIs, these key right. point indicators from right. black men, from uh Gen X women, women, Hispanic women. 
Mm-hmm. Hispanic women yeah. not really big on women being in charge. They need strong men. From a in cultural standpoint. From a thing. cultural yeah. standpoint. Yeah, they are. They're not comfortable. They see women as temperamental, you know, and oh, she'll maybe make the wrong decision. But wait a minute. I told you before <laughs> that, they, that, that, you know, they're just brokers. They don't go in there and just willy nilly make decisions and all that. They got cabinets. They have to vet all right. these decisions that you think you want to make. Right. That's why the other choice is not the same choice mm-hmm. uh, with, with Trump. This guy will not take CIA briefings. This guy will not. Uh, he, he won't. He won't read. No, okay. He won't. All right. So, but still, it, it, there's the image of a man there, supposedly strong, and and, and 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 all of this. But with black men, let me bring it back to black men. Black men, I think, at this point, uh, especially us, and this, we're tired. Mm-hmm. Tired of going around the same circles again, and and and. You know, there's nothing major popping out that's happening, uh, or nothing major happening for my community. And you can't tell me that we don't have smart people or, or people that are able to do things. But um, with the boosters and the donations, we don't have that access. We don't have access to that. So is it systemic racism that's holding us back? Is it, is it the system that people uh, uh, are tired of? So your biggest problem with black men probably won't be black men voting for Trump, it will probably be black men choosing not to vote yeah, for this oh, cycle right. because I'm tired. That, that, that is a good point because yeah. yeah. a lot of people yeah. are to this point to where they are so upset because you, like you said, you, that was a great point you just made. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah. I have these discussions all the times and people just, they're tired. But we're going to be upset and not do anything and yeah, then where complacent. where will this right. country, country go? go. Well, right. let, let like you t- think about that. We cannot right. be complacent right. and we cannot worry right. and be concerned that there's a woman right now who can literally be the leader of our country. Mm-hmm. We've had all these men all this time. But right. I all right. Right. But I don't so, what, so what's the what's the point in gender? I guess it, this it, is my it, point. So to, it shouldn't be an issue of I, gender. And and to, you're right, it's not for most men, and I know it's a general saying I'm saying this, yeah. it's not the misogyny aspect. Because she, she's okay. qualified. You talking about that? Men. I, yeah, certain men. men that's like yeah. two, three percent. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, but the issue of, yeah. of, of but, black but, men voting for Trump, I guess I don't under, I, I, I don't see it. Like I, I, yeah. I, I don't see where there is that attraction. Mm-hmm. And what are you going to get out of it? Like, what is it going to do for you? It's a I, just to so, piggyback off of that. A lot of it is. Uh, since we've been on this trend, yeah, open, no, that's, yeah, 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 a yeah. lot of it. Tim is Scott, the, for example, yeah, Tim Scott. A lot of it is, is <laughs> <Okay>. money, <laughs> and, and but, that's the people, access, but listen, yeah. you, some of the people that they're polling, mm-hmm. you don't have money to begin with. It, but it's so the, the people you're polling, uh-huh. even like you think about the typical Trump voter, yeah, yeah. like you voting against your interests already, yeah, like to vote for him anyway, yeah. yeah. And they're you know, say this, I did this, that when, even though they may not have the money to get the benefits of a Trump administration, they're looking at it as if things were better from a standing, a spending standpoint while Trump was in office. I never the, understood that. From the, yeah. from inflation to the grocery I think it's all perception. It's all perception. It's all, look at COVID. Yeah. Once you look at COVID, <laughs> before, his before, before COVID. Was, a, was a total failure, I think. So. But before, before COVID, though. Yeah. You, to, to be that that spending, yeah, and this is what I right, been shared with to, me. Yeah, but he yeah. briefed what Barack left. Oh, and, and and left. That's what it was. And and, and that may be the case, but we have to be honest about it and say, even though he may it's agree, under it, his administration. It's under 